Hello everyone, I'm going to do a video on uh, another project I got. I bought these two frogs back in 2014 as froglets. Uh, so once they hit a year of maturity, uh, they were producing eggs. And I noticed that first breeding season, a lot of the eggs were not fertile or viable. Uh, needless to say, I had five of them that hatched and grew uh, into healthy little frogs and I had five in here originally and I sold three of them already I held back two of them that might be a probable pair in case I needed some backup if these weren't producing but so far this season this year these two frogs have outdone themselves so right now I have 45 to 50 uh, tap holes with most of them turning into froglets already. Have one back here. Kind of show you. you. Just he's got his front leg and back legs, and he'll absorb his tail probably in the next week or so, and I'll put him in his grow out tank, which I'll show you guys in a second. You can see the blue on him already. So it's pretty cool. This is their grow out tank. Uh, it's just a Exoterra 36 by 18 by 18. It does have a false bottom. Uh, it's just hard to tell because I didn't want it to look like there was a false bottom. I left a three quarter inch gap around the inside walls of the tank between the false bottom. Uh, so I filled that up with the aqua soil to just give the illusion that it's just solid substrate, but it's not. And in this corner I left a cut out just so water could pool here and I can get it out when it starts to build up. I don't have any sphagnum moss on the ABG mix just yet because uh, I wanted the roots from all these vining plants to have good contact right away so they would spread out as fast as possible. I have used an organic fertilizer to try to jumpstart some of these plants because uh, there's not much nutrients in the, the ABG mix initially I don't think. But uh, I use vining plants because they grow fast and they can absorb a lot of nutrients so when I have 45 to 50 froglets in here jumping around you know, hopefully the plants can keep up with their waste. But that's pretty much it so it's rewarding for sure did not intend on being a frog breeder but I must say it's it's nice to have a little supplement income here and there I think this is the female right here the old fat girl Just got them in 10 gallons. And when I, when I split them up, I put the uh, the male in a five gallon tank. I'm about to have to split them up for this season. Call it an end of this season because uh, I know a lot. Some of the eggs are starting to be unfertile. And I think they just need a break for now. And next year I'll probably have something like this again from them. I'm gonna raise these froglets. Uh, you know, until they're a couple months old, so they're healthy and they got a good start before I sell them off. So, that's about it. So, yeah, if anybody's considering a new pet and they don't know what to get, well, these dart frogs are a lot easier than a dog or cat. To care for they require very little maintenance uh, when you set up the vivariums properly the vivariums act as like a miniature ecosystem so when they're totally sealed off like this you see a glass lid humidity is almost 100 percent most of the time about 85 to 95 percent humidity which is what your dart frogs need 
because they absorb all their moisture through their skin and they would dry out very quickly. Uh, they're not good to hold uh, just because the oils on our fingers and skin uh, would greatly harm them. And I've been told that the temperature of our skin would feel like a hot spatula when you go to pick up a, an amphibian that's cold blooded like that. So they would, it would just cause them a lot of stress, but they are very good display animals for your office or home. They're always active during the day. They are diurnal, so they're, they sleep at night. So they're hopping around during the day for people to enjoy. So they make great pets. They honestly do. And like I said, I didn't intend to breed them. So to have all these extra frogs just from two original frogs, really amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and sell these two off soon. Just to make some room. We gotta make room now. Over here some this was a little clutch of three eggs. They just all hatch pretty much at the same time and I gotta get them in their own individual cups pretty quick because they'll start to cannibalize each other as tadpoles. That's what dark frogs do. So yeah, after doing a little research, starting to gain some good first-hand experience and getting knowledgeable in the dark frog breeding. I use LEDs a lot now. Uh, they're a lot more conservative as far as power consumption goes. Very low wattage with high output, which is good for plant growth. Good for viewing. Um, so anything. Anyway, that's pretty much it. If any, anybody got any comments or questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So, hopefully, this video was informative for people that are new to the hobby or thinking about getting into the hobby. Thanks for watching. Everybody have a good one.